I can move them. You're, you had four toes that were, what did you do that caused them to go all the way back and touch the top of your foot? What did you do? I, you, and I want to say I were fell. Were you playing soccer with a large steel ball? I want to say I fell down the stairs, but I fell down a stair. Just one stair? That's all it took? I was one stair away from the bottom and I fell down a stair. And I fell down in such a way like it was, the upstairs everybody's like, oh my God, because I, like I let out a, like a, just a scream and then I laid on the ground and I'm like, I'm hurt. <laughs> I've and fallen and I can't, can't get, get up. Get up. <laughs> now, my family and my wife, I believe she, she always thinks I'm a warrior because I did let out a scream of pain. Yeah. And then I was at the bottom and she's all, you all right? And I go, no. And then this class, she's like, well, do I have to come downstairs? <laughs> I go, no, I'll be fine. I, I don't know. I'm hurt really bad, though. <laughs> it smells like almonds. <laughs> it smells like almonds. <laughs> clean, it, clean them up before he starts to stink up the front. My friend, my friend. What movie is that from? We'll be right back. Well, good morning and welcome to Wake Up. Where we wake, wake up. up. I'm Pastor Jason. I'm Pastor Scott. We're going to do a morning scripture. We're going to pray every day. Welcome. It's so good to have you with They're us. They're looking good. Yeah. So Today we're going to be in 2 Samuel chapter 23 Yahoo! and verse 15. Yeah. I want to just keep doing the Yahoo you've been from yesterday. You've been talking about... That was from uh, Friday. Or Friday. Or Thursday. No, or, it was no yesterday. that was yesterday. It was yesterday. Uh, I'm getting blurry. Hey, welcome to Wake Up. I'm not awake. <laughs> we wake up. <laughs> I mean, this because I need coffee. Yes, and I need characters. Do you have your coffee? Look at you. You have your coffee. They're looking good. Um, David longs for water in this scripture. And, and so, you know, the, Jesus is for the thirsty. And, and you talked about, in your message, you've been, you've been teaching about your thoughts and capturing your thoughts, what you're letting in through the gate. And you talked about the TSA agents and how many bad guys, how many shady people do they let through? Because once you let them through, it's going to be really hard to stop them. Right. So you want to stop things at the gate. And, and you taught on the scripture in the book of Isaiah where God said, I want you to, to turn turn back the battle at the gate and then I'll bring strength to you. Mm -hmm. And so our job isn't to overcome what's happening, the, the big battle that can happen inside. God will give you strength on that. But we do have an occupation here, a responsibility to, to stop things at the gate. I like the occupation. And, That's and good. That, and really, what is that? It means, like, what am I thinking about? Right. What are you thinking about right now? What are you letting through your thoughts throughout the day? What things? And having a purpose, because it goes back to uh, David in the story of David where he took his seat in the gate. Yeah. So, so there's a great point where his whole life was a mess because he wasn't in the position of the gate. That's right. Where he was designed to be. And so we go through oftentimes through our day and just whatever thoughts want to get through. What happens if the TSA agent doesn't take his position right. at the gate? Yeah. Well, then just anything can get on through yeah. and things that are going to slow the planes. You know, you have planes every day that are flying. God's planes wants to take you to joy. He wants to take you to success. He wants to take you to great things today. Mm -hmm. But if the wrong things get through the gate, right. then those wrong things, now there's a delay because the planes can't take off now. Mm -hmm. So now how come I'm not having joy? Well, because you let the wrong things get through the gate. Yeah. In 2 Samuel chapter 23 and verse 15, David's longing for water. So he's thirsty. And we're all thirsty about what we're going to be thinking about. We're, we're thirsty and hungry. And, and so really, if we're not going to be thinking about the negative things, we've got to think about something. This is about choosing what I am going to think about. And we have to learn how to long for the right kind of water. Right? It is fun to think about the wrong things, but we have right. to learn and teach ourselves That's so good. at the gate how to think about the right kind of things. You know, think about the good things about your wife. Think about the good things. Think, think on these things. It, it's what I call replacement therapy. If you want to stop something, you have to replace it with something. Right. And so you want to start something when you stop something. If I'm going to stop thinking bad thoughts, then I'm going to start thinking good thoughts. And David longed for water. And he said, oh, that someone would get me a drink of water from the well. Near the gate right. of Bethlehem. Sounds like my wife, though. When you get ready for, oh, when you get for, when you get for, ready for bed and she come in the room, I'm laying in bed, I'm all tucked in, I'm all sitting up the thing, and she's like, I'm thirsty. Okay. Oh, that somebody would get me a drink from the well of the kitchen. <laughs> and I just go, I think to myself, I go, you know what I do when I'm thirsty? I get a drink. I don't announce it to the whole world. Yeah, but, but when you're married, for some reason, men are now in charge of the bedtime water. We are. I didn't. No one told it's me. A very high percentage. No one, no one sat me down because I think young men, you make the mistake, and your wife comes in and goes, "I'm thirsty." You go, "Yeah, grab me something too." When you're down there, how about the how about the the late night? You know, she walks in the bedroom and she goes, "We're out of milk." Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> There's a lot of stuff we're out of. <laughs> no, no. Translation. Can you go to the store and get some milk? <laughs> now? You, see, you just have to learn how to communicate. <laughs> I'm out of gas. Translation. Get in my car and go get me some gas. Yeah, yeah, my car's dirty. Yeah, mine too. I go, yeah, they're all dirty. <laughs> I like the one, hey, did you hear that in the middle of the night? Did you hear that? <laughs> no, I was, I was sleeping. <laughs> well, there was a noise. Okay. <laughs> Why don't you go check it out? Are you trying to get me killed? <laughs> what's, what's, what's She's it? hired someone to come in. I remember one of our, our favorite, uh, this a little the quick story though. When we first went, uh, got married yeah. and uh, got, you know, for the honeymoon, got in the room and I got all situated in the wow, bed. where's this story going? Just stop it. And so, you in the bed and she goes, oh, wait a second, that, that's, you're on this side. Oh. And I go, oh. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. We and have that, a side and then, of the bed. And then when we got in the apartment, and I got in bed, you know, kind of. And then she goes, "No, no, you're over here." And I go, "Why am I? Why is this my side? It's the other side that there was there." She goes, "Because you're closer to the door." Oh, right. If that way, if someone were to come in, and they're like, "Oh, let's get them," and they go, "Oh no, the guys <laughs> closer to the door. We can't get them." <laughs> the this guys on the other side. Now. I think we can. We do got it. it. We got them. Anyway, <laughs> okay, so in 2 Samuel chapter 23, verse 15, listen to the water he wanted to drink from. And, and this is something that we need to be recognizing is that there's a, there's a water from the well near the gate of Bethlehem. Now, Bethlehem, you have to remember, that's where Jesus was born. So at the moment where eternity touches the physical world, where heavens meet and kiss the earth, the, the moment when the spiritual supernatural things became visible, the word right. became flesh. Wow. So this is the well we want to learn how to drink from. It's the bread of life. It's the life-giving word of God. It's the water of Jesus Christ. In fact, the word Bethlehem means house of bread. Go and get me and, and you something. Know bring me life. You know what? You're drinking from the house of the well of Bethlehem right now. Right. Like you got up and was like, I'm, I'm gonna, not going to watch that. I'm going to watch Wake Up. I'm going to do a daily Bible study. I'm going to get give, the Word. I'm going to give something for, for my day that's going to give me some life. That's what wow. David was saying. Good David, job. David could have said anything. He could have said, hey, get me, get me a drink over there out of that little pool down, you know, the little pond down there. Yeah. Maybe There might have been something closer. Right. They might have even had a barrel. Right. Barrel. I'm sure they had like barrel of water pretty close, but he said, yeah. I want to drink from life. No. What do you want? Yeah. And there's a, there's a little deep part here. And I think... I love this. Yeah. Let me just hit it. Is that when Jacob saw Rachel, um, they said to Jacob, we can't roll the stone away and water the sheep until all the sheep have gathered. Right. So the, the water that that flows is, is, is substantially... I want to say it's magical. There's something amazing that happens in the gathering. Right. Right? So we can all get water today, and that's great. You should have some daily bread. But in the gathering. There we go, Jason. All being in church. Church and okay. sun on the weekend. He said, we can't water the sheep until all the sheep are gathered. And so so also, this is how God uh, rolls, is that water from the altar, it's it's part of the gathering process. He's right. like, why does he do it that way? Because the, the wisdom, his intent was his intent and purpose was that now through the church, the manifold wisdom might be made known to those in the heavenly places. So the wisdom is poured out in a flood when we're gathered when they brought him the water they only brought enough for one david gets his cup the, the men went down to bethlehem it was very dangerous they crossed the enemy lines <laughs> and they got I their king a glass of water just right. one though and when they got to him they brought it to him and he's like no lemon <laughs> i don't know why that's funny oh my gosh <laughs> that made me laugh that's what bothered him <laughs> he poured the, this seems like an insult but really what he what god was showing us something he poured the water out on the ground he wouldn't drink it and you would think that's an insult to the men. But he said, listen, if, I'm, if I can't, if not everyone gets it, then I don't get it. Ooh. And so he was showing us that same picture. It's, it's the water at the gathering. He wanted all of his men to drink the right. well of Bethlehem, not just him. Wait, <laughs> you think in the mind, they're like, wait, I fought death and armies <laughs> and bad people. I slid a few throats <laughs> today to get some water. <laughs> Can you imagine even a waitress? Hey, uh, ma'am, I'm going to need uh, some special water from across the street. She brings it, you're like, thank you. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> if you don't bring it for the whole table, and they're like, but you didn't ask for the whole table, <laughs> then none of us drink the water. Oh, well, let's pray I'm going to do day. that this week. Let's, let's pray. Get that right water in you. I'm gonna do that with Holly. Yeah, have you ever noticed when you go to the fountain drink at the fast food restaurant, they do not offer the right drink? 
Right. There's there's nine options, but none of them. Can I just give you a fact? None of them are right. <laughs> There's a little tab that says water, that one. You know what this- That's the one you want. This reminds me of though, it's your story. Can you tell the story real quick of Kelly and the to first time you made her toast? Cause it's, so, <laughs> this, it's the same story. As long as she's not listening today. Logan, if you're watching this, turn it off. I don't want your mom to hear this part. It's a favorite story though. <laughs> I made her, she goes, can you go make me some this toast? This is your first marriage. We were early married. I goes, absolutely, I go make you some toast. I went in the kitchen, I made her toast and I brought her toast back on a plate, buttered. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she went like this. She she looked at the plate, and we had a trash can right here. And she went like this. She went, and she, <laughs> she didn't even taste it. She just leaned the plate over, and both pieces of toast slid into the trash can. And she goes, she goes, I'm sorry, I don't eat soggy toast. <laughs> That's a funny story. One thing you need to know about my wife is she demands excellence from everything that she does and everyone around her. She demands magnificence. I don't eat soggy toast. Dear and, Father, Lord, yeah. we ask that you bless And it was them. soggy. I had to give it. It was like it had sat Because we grew up at home where we did too much butter on it. it had, well, and it sat too long. I didn't bring it to her right away. It was my bad. Dear Father, Lord, we ask that you bless them, guide them, and direct them, Lord, that that they begin to be hungry for the right, the life that comes, that's what comes in. This is what I want. I want life in my words. I want everything that goes through my gate to bring life, to edify, to build up. Everything that is contrary to that, I don't allow through my gates. I don't let the negative, I don't let the limitations, I don't let what people have said about me, I only let what you said about me, that I am a conqueror, that I'm an overcomer, that I'm blessed, that I'm smart, that I have the mind of Christ, that whatever my hands touch seems to prosper, that I'm blessed when I go in and I'm blessed when I go out, that my body is healthy, my body is whole. This is the only things that I allow ever to pass through my gate because what gets in begins to come out. Mm. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, watch this clip. You know, um, I'm kind of merging two series together. I was loving the gate series that we were in last week, and so I wasn't all the way finished, but it seems to flow really well with relationships. Isaiah 28, 6 from last week says this. Throw that up there for Miss, Miss Pets. A source, God says, I'll be a source of strength to those who turn back the battle at the gate. Too many times we don't have good security at our gate, which is our mind. What's going on on the inside? The series was all about taking our position. David didn't take his position, so life got out of control. When you and I sit down in the gate and say, I'm in control of what goes in and what goes out, it changes everything. Man, it's so much easier to be happy when I only let happy things in, right? It's easy to be depressed when I let the negative in, but you are the TSA of your gate. It says, if you'll turn back the battle at the gate, then I'm gonna strengthen you up. And so if I begin to say no, only good thoughts and happy thoughts and thoughts of, that encourage me and thoughts that build me up, those are the only things to get through, then it's easy to be happy. I'm not designed to handle negative and stress and worry and fear. I'm not designed to do that. So once that gets past the gate, my body begins to go overload a bit, begins to not function right. But when it comes to relationships, imagine if both people Stop the bad thoughts at the gate. There'd be no fights. There'd be no arguments. There'd be none of that. You just got to stop it at the gate. Somebody at the office does something that kind of stabbed you in the back. And you go, you know what? That's all right. Because God loves me and God's my promoter. And I'm, not, I'm sure hurting people hurt. And so I'm just going to love them. Do you see? I didn't let it pass the gate. And now I didn't get worked up and lose sleep and have to tell everybody in the office all of Susie's problems. Because I stopped it at the gate. When your spouse does something a little insensitive, right? Maybe they're on their phone while you're telling a story, they answer a call, and sometimes you let that through, and it's a whirlwind of mess now, right? You begin to attack, but instead you go, I've done that too. And then, hey, honey, I'm talking. You say it with a smile like you used to when you're dating. And then, oh, I am so sorry. It was just, yeah, my bad, I'll put it away. See, I saved a fight because I stopped it at the gates. See, when you let it through the gate, well, he's always or she's always insensitive. They never do. And, they, and by the time it gets in the gate, it's a big old mess. You and I got to learn to stop all of the negative stuff at the gate about five, six weeks ago in our new house. A couple of our, our, our toilets in the house, it's an older house, that when you flushed it, if you don't hold it down, it doesn't flush. I don't know if you guys have ever had that. When you push it, he sounds like he flushed but it just swirled everything around, made a little soup in there. That's all he did. 
So the family was on code red because Holly was just annoyed. No one flushed this toilet. No one flushed this toilet. No one flushed this toilet. And I'm like, and I just got, I'm like, I know I flushed it. Well, come to find out, there, there's a, a piece in there you got to replace the little little flapper guy to fix it. And so I thought on a, on a Saturday, I'm like, oh, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna use my expertise and, and watch YouTube, and then I'm gonna go down and get the pieces. And I I spent about two and a half three hours. I fixed all the toilets in the house. You fly? Oh, my toilets are they're like Ferraris. They're just amazing. I flushed the toilet. Good. Holly comes home and I'm there a little sweat, and I'm like, hi, sweetie. I said, you know what, today I fixed the toilets. And she's like, what's wrong with the toilets? I said, well, you know, you had to hold them down so they'll flush. And she says, oh, are you too lazy to hold down the handle? <laughs> Here's the problem. My TSA agents were on break at that moment. <laughs> They weren't, I wasn't ready for it. I wasn't ready for what was gonna storm the gate at that moment. So I let that in there. And then what happens is I then needed to explain to her everything I thought she was lazy at in the history of our relationship. You ever done that, men, where you, where you just go, right? It gets in and all of a sudden you just let it free and you're about three quarters of the way through and you go, that wasn't a good idea. <laughs> Man, I wish I could get a do-over. I always wish that it was kind of like a movie where I had like a director over my life, right? And I, I go after Hot Rod and all of a sudden the director's like, and cut. All right, Scott, we're gonna run that scene through one more time. Remember your character. You're a loving, caring husband that's patient and is always kind. Your motivation for the scene is you're trying to get lucky tonight. And action. <laughs> Oh, right, because if I stopped it at the gate, I would just laugh with her. I'm like, well, you're right, I'm super lazy. I'm the guy that spent three hours working on the toilet because I'm so lazy. Right, isn't that what you did when you're dating? You just laugh those things out. But once you've been married for five, 10, 15, 26 years, sometimes your little agents let them in. But if we can learn in our relationships, well, people do hurtful things, but nothing gets past because now God gives me the strength to be patient. Thumbs up. Hope you enjoyed it. Share it, like, and subscribe. And get to the house of God this weekend. Yeah, if you live in Arizona, come hang out with us. We'll have fun. If you don't live in Arizona, find a great local church and, uh, and plant in there. Be in there. Yeah.